Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft Supply. With me, Lonnie Minuay, co-worker and leather crafter in her own right. And we've both been excited about this video because... We both got started this way with remnant bags just like this. That's exactly right. Now, here's a great thing. Incredibly inexpensive and you will be surprised at the projects we're going to make out of this simple bag of remnants. These remnants come from our own manufacturing facility, so you're going to get really high quality in here, and you're going to be amazed at what you can get out of these. Yeah, and we're not, we're not talking about just a simple little keychain with your initial on it. We're going to do some cool projects. Now, Lonnie's going to get us started with a bleed knot keychain. Now, bleed knot, very cool. You'll see this on a lot of saddles and tack, but actually, it's simply a closure that requires no hardware. So let's get started. Okay, so for our bleed knot, First thing that we're going to do is take our strap, and this strap has been cut from our bag of remnants um, to about three quarters of an inch wide. We're just going to simply place that on our, our split ring here, fold it over, and match up the ends. And then all we're going to do is we're going to cut the ends together to a point, not only because it looks great, but because it's going to make it so much easier to pull it through the slits that we're going to cut in our leather. So there's that. Now we want to kind of keep in mind where our split ring is going to be and we're going to open it and cut a slit in the front. You want to make sure that you're always cutting your slits in the front because you're pulling the back strap through each time. So if you cut in the back, you'll have to start over again, but no big deal because this is a very easy project. So we're going to go ahead and cut the slits three quarters of, three quarters of an inch, which is the same width as our strap. Okay. Flip that over and we're just simply going to pull that through the front there and just tighten it up. And this leather is nice and supple, very forgiving and is going to make a gorgeous bleed knot. So there we have our first knot. So now all we're going to do is we're going to flip this back again, make sure that we're only cutting through our front side, go down again about three quarters of an inch cut another three quarter inch slit and pull the back through again. Remember, you can do this as many times as you like depending on the length of your strap and what your project's going to be. But for us today, this is what we've got and look how beautiful that came out. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, that is just a cool little project. And no kidding, out of one remnant bag, you could probably cut about 30 of these. And you know, even though we put this on a key ring, these don't necessarily have to be for your keys. These are awesome, they could go on anything. They could be zipper pulls, they could be luggage tags, they could be purse dangles, uh, you name it. It's all up to you. And you can see the one that I did was kind of on the short side, but you can do them longer, narrower. The possibilities are absolutely endless. That is great. All right, so now we're gonna jump over to our next project. Now this is kind of more for the guys. I love this cuff. But ladies, it's beautiful. You could absolutely decorate it in a hundred different directions. So let's start on a cuff. Now this is an incredibly simple cuff to make. We're simply going to take two loops. These are one inch by half inch, available in nickel and brass. And I'm going to connect those two with a piece of leather. All right, so one inch width, we know that. Now I'm gonna take this out to two and a half inches. So I have enough room to go around both loops. Now here's the easiest part. This arm on my square is one inch wide. So I can lay that down, square that across my edge, simply make a cut just like that, quick and easy. So I'm gonna cut four of these right now, and we're gonna see where that puts us on size. So let's square across our top, make a nice even cut there, very clean. Now with our square, let's come out to two and a half inches. And we're gonna cut four of these, Nice, now we need to punch our holes. So we're gonna take a revolving punch. I'm gonna bend this over and that's gonna give me my center line. Easy enough, so let's drop in a rivet hole there. Now for the ends, I need a hole on each end so that will bend back and rivet. But I don't want my hole too close to the edge but I also don't want it too close to the center hole or it will bind. So let's come in just about 3 eighths of an inch. Nice. Now I'm gonna punch the other three and we're gonna jump over to our marble and set some rivets. 
Now I might actually make five. Four might be short, but we're gonna put these together and take a look at it. Now, with our square, we have got a weld line there, and I don't want that on the outside, so I'm gonna drop that onto the back. I'm gonna take a second one, same thing, weld onto the back. I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna take a quarter inch or a small double cap rivet, go through one of my outside holes, through the second outside hole, and if I center that, my rivet pops right through. Let's go ahead and set that. Good. Now let's drop in another. Same thing. Going to drop my weld line inside, both on one piece. Bend that around. Let's take a post. Drop that through one of my outside holes, the second one, and that's going to line up right in the middle. Drop that in. Now I'm going to add Actually, I'm gonna add three more pieces or three more segments. Then let's jump over here because we need some tabs. I'm gonna have a tab on each end so I can add in a line 20 snap for my closure. And my last rivet. Well, that looks great, doesn't it? Very cool. Let's put that on my wrist. Nice, that's gonna give me just enough room for a closure because I don't want this too tight. I want this out about here so my snap's gonna overlay right about here. So therefore, from our bend back over to our snap hole needs to be about three quarters of an inch. So let's jump back over to our cutting board and cut our tabs. Now cut two more tabs, two and a half inches, should be plenty. So what I wanna do is drop in a punch hole, same at both ends, just like we did on our, our little cross pieces there. Now, again, same thing, let's go right to our middle because that seems to have good movement there. So let's drop in one punch in our middle on both pieces. There we go, flatten that out. That gives me my center line, drop that in, nice. So what we're going to do is rivet this on just like we did our other pieces. You can have a small double cap right there. Then we need about three quarters of an inch. We determine from our edge. So let's come out, let's come out maybe just a little bit more. There we go. Now I'm gonna mark that the same on both pieces. Let's punch a hole there, right in our center, and very nice. Now, we're going to set two line 20, uh, line 20 snaps here, so let's head back to our quartz. We're going to do a round-in punch and set a line 20, and this, this project is done. Now, with our tabs, the one thing I want to do here is I add a round-in punch. Now, this is not absolutely necessary, but it certainly dresses up the end, makes it look very professional one inch round in punch, and I'm gonna drop that on the outside of my snap hole. But the one thing I need to be careful of here is that I wanna get that round in too close to the snap hole because I need just a little bit of tab on the outside of the snap. So those are set. Now let's come in to our one side or the other. I'm gonna wrap this around just like we did before. Take a small double cap, put that in from the back. Comes right through to the front. Let's set that. Straighten it just a little bit. That looks good. And with our setter, drop that in. Now, while we're here, let's go ahead and set our line 20 snap. So I'm gonna bring the post. Now this is the part with the naked back on it. I'm gonna bring that through my strap. I'm gonna take the flanged piece with the flange a little bit on the inside. Now here's the thing, if I, if I reverse the two female pieces, it's not gonna be an issue because those are the two pieces that bite. We're simply riveting those onto our strap. I'm gonna take a line 20 setter and you'll notice I'm setting this flat because I want the, the base on this to be flat against the skin, which it is. Now I wanna set that just hard enough to where it doesn't spin. Now let's flip this around. We're gonna to go to the other side. Let's drop in our rivet from the back. Bring that through to the front. Set that with a cap. Nice, and now this last piece. We're gonna bring our cap, the rounded portion of the post from the front. We're gonna flip that over. Now we need an amble because I don't wanna crush that on my marble, I don't wanna flatten it. But just like the other side, I'm gonna drop my setter in the, in the post. Two good shots, and there we go. Is that not a great looking cuff or what? 
So what do you think, Lonnie? Did that not come out gorgeous? Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I love this. And although this was sort of set up as a guy project, I can already see many possibilities for turning this into something just a little bit more feminine. Sky's the limit with this. It is, and the possibilities here. Think of just something along the lines of a belt or purse strap or gun strap. But we've got all kinds of hardware. In fact, that's a half of an inch solid brass oak, which would turn that design into a very delicate, almost a refined piece of jewelry, and that would be gorgeous. Now, next project, one of my favorites, because I love fringe and tassels. What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna show you how to make a tassel, and you'll be able to do all sorts of different things with that to uh, dress up your projects. Good, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on our tassel, and this is very basic, very simple. We're just taking a piece of our leather from our remnant bag. And this is a nice upholstery weight leather, so this can make a really pretty tassel, nice and supple. So I just wanna square up my piece of leather here. Make sure that I have a nice clean edge to start with. Just cut right down the side here. Okay. And now I wanna make sure that I have about a one inch spine at the top here. This spine is actually going to be giving us our basis for the rest of our tassel, and this is the part that we'll be gluing. So I'm just gonna drop this in here, and we want our strands to be about a quarter of an inch. This is not absolutely crucial that it's exactly a quarter of an inch. If they're a little wider or a little bit narrower, not a big deal. Nobody's going to be able to tell once you get your tassel all rolled. So we'll just go through. I'm gonna make about seven or eight strands, which is gonna make a nice moderate sized tassel that's gonna look great on just about anything you wanna put it on. And there's our last cut. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pass this on over to Chuck. This does require a little bit of special gluing, and so he's gonna show us how we can do that. Now the glue pattern on this is a little bit odd. So I've got my top grain down. So this, the suede side of the leather is gonna be the inside of the tassel. And that's going to be my first strand that I'm going to bend up, glue in, and then when we roll this, that's gonna be a little loop at the top. That makes these very cool. All right, so first thing, on the backing and on the strand that I'm going to bend up to make our loop, I'm going to use the S18. Now this is a great contact cement, it's one of my favorites. But with contact cement, we're gonna need that on both pieces to glue. So it's gonna be easy enough to add glue onto this, flip it over because it's not gonna to stick to my table. Now on the back side, I'm gonna need contact cement all the way across the spine, and I'm gonna need it down to about a third of the distance, but we can measure that out. So I'm gonna roll this up, I'm gonna glue that down, I'm going to leave a little bit of a loop at the top, and then I'm going to glue the other piece right on top of that. So when we roll it up, we have that little loop sticking out. So what I'm going to do is with my fingernail, just mark the bottom of that piece. That's how far my glue needs, needs to extend. So let's take our contact cement, I'm going to glue across the spine and down that one strand. And that last strand right down to our mark. Now I wanna be a little careful here. The glue isn't gonna to stick to my board here, but I don't wanna get glue over here, and if by chance I move my project across, I'm gonna have glue on the front. But also too, let's give this just a second to dry so that again, I don't get glue on this when I flip it over to glue the other side. Now our glue's dry, so on this side, on the inside, we're all the way across on our spine and down to this mark on our first strand. So let's flip that over. Now, on this first strand, it's now on the outside, but I can see my mark there. But let's go ahead and with our fingernail, drop a mark in there as well. Now on this side, I'm gonna go down to that mark on that first strand, but I'm only gonna come across about a third of the way. Nice, now let's let that dry, and then I'm gonna pass this back over to Lonnie to add some hardware and to roll this up, and our project is complete. All right, so we're all glued and ready to go, and to save a little bit of time, because I like the tapered end look, I went ahead and cut each strand down so that it has a tapered point at the end. You can certainly leave it square at the end, totally up to you. Okay, so now at this point, we wanna go ahead and put our hardware on. First, before we do that, we're gonna take our very last strand here, and we're gonna pull it up, and we're gonna press it down, 
nice and firm so it adheres very well to that top piece. Now we're ready to slide the hardware on. Just pop that right in there. We're gonna pull it down just so that there's a very small loop there, just enough so the hardware sits just above the top of your tassel. Again, we're gonna press that down really good and now we're ready to roll it up. As we're rolling, we wanna keep it nice and tight. Press down as we go. Try to keep it straight at the top so you have a nice even look for your tassel. We don't have far to go, so that's not hard to do. Okay, so there we go. That is literally all there is to it. It's beautiful, very nice, and you could use it in so many different ways. Well, what do you think of that? Well, that is a gorgeous project. Simple, inexpensive, and beautiful. And here's the great thing. You can cut your tassel as long as you want. You can add as many strands as you want. And again, your choice of leather, sky's the limit. Absolutely. There's just so many different directions that you could go with this. You could use this as a purse dangle, as a zipper pull, any kind of zipper you want. It could go on boots, it could go on your luggage, could go on a dog collar. It could even go on a key ring. We put this nice little handy snap on there. So all you'd have to do is just pop that on there, put it on your keys. There are so many possibilities. You could even use it as an earring. And speaking of earrings, that's exactly where we're going next. Lonnie has a gorgeous design for a simple earring. So let's get started on that. All right, so now we are ready to go and cut out our pieces for our earrings. And as you can see, I have one already cut out. And because they're earrings, I'd kind of like them to match fairly similarly. They don't have to be exact, but I'm gonna use the first one that I did as a template for the second one. So I'm just going to take my awl here and I'm going to go around the outside so I have a basic pattern. And again, this does not have to be precise at all. And there's the last cut of our feather shape. I'm just gonna pop that out of there. Now you can see this is a nice basic shape, but it doesn't really look much like a feather yet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add the little cuts in each side to give it that feathery texture. So nothing that I'm going to measure, just very simply just going to go down and make very narrow cuts all the way down each side. So there's our last cut in our feather texture and look how nice that looks. So much more realistic than it did before. So as beautiful as this is the way it is, I would absolutely love to add a little bit of color. So I'm gonna to step to the side over here and add just a little bit of paint. So all set up and ready to paint. Today I've chosen the gift box blue color to use on the leather that I've chosen here just because I think it's gonna be a beautiful contrast. If you don't like that color, we have lots of colors to choose from. I set these out just because they are absolutely gorgeous. These bright, vibrant colors, they show up beautifully on whatever leather you decide to use them on. But at this point, I'm gonna go back to my gift box blue and go ahead and put some paint on my feathers. And there's the last touch of paint. Don't those look amazing? I absolutely love the gift box blue on the shade of brown that I've chosen for these earrings. Absolutely adore them. So now we're just about done. Just a couple little steps left to do and it'll be all set. So I'm just going to punch a couple of small holes at the top of my earrings and put in a couple jump rings and some earring wires and we will be all done. So here we have our finished product. I went ahead and put my ear wires on and my jump rings and didn't they turn out nice? I love the color, I love the shape. And the great thing about this is you can fine tune the shape any way you like. You can make them shorter, you can make them wider. This is already really close to a leaf pattern uh, so you can paint it green, make it a leaf. Um, the great thing that I like about this particular size and shape is it's also very appropriate for a pendant. So I could add one more and have a matching set. And that is gorgeous. That Actually, that's an out-of-the-box thought right there. But you guys, now these may look like a, a project for the ladies. Absolutely not. Think of this. Think of eagles or hawks or think of all the game bird feathers. The sky is the limit simply with the paint on these, not just the shape and design. The thing about all of this is that we have so many fantastic ideas that are going to come out of this remnant bag that we've decided that we really need a little bit more time and space to do this. And we do. Yeah. So, we're going to do another video with projects just from an inexpensive remnant bag. So, I hope this was a lot of fun. Got some great projects out of this. We'll look forward to seeing you again. Good luck with your projects.